Well, hey, everybody. Dr. Sean Talbot here. Thanks a lot for joining me on uh, Tuesday night. It's August 25th. Oh, there it is right in front of me uh, on my slide. August 25th. So we're going to talk again about the immune system. This is uh, August. We've really tried to focus a lot on immune system nutrition. So we've talked about priming your immune system. We've talked about your gut, where 70% of your immune system lives. We've talked about um, the, the, the impact of stress and sleep on your immune system. We're, uh, next week, even though next Tuesday is actually technically September, it's September 1st, I'm going to do one more about the importance of inflammation for not just cardiorespiratory um, uh, function, but, you know, for, for work, getting the whole system to work better, right? Because a lot of reasons that people right now are concerned about their immune system is because of COVID-19, which is primarily a respiratory tract sort of a infection. So, but tonight what we're going to talk about is the specific nutrients that we can use to help keep our immune system running strong. So you can see here, nourishing your immune system uh, is what we're talking about tonight. And if you want to, if you want to dive into any of those other topics that I just mentioned about the, the, you know, the role of the gut in the immune system or the role of stress and sleep in the immune system or et cetera, et cetera, or priming your immune system, which is probably the most sort of proactive thing that you can do to, to not just protect ourselves from an immune system perspective, but use the immune system to help us feel better from a mental wellness perspective. All of those previous um, uh, classes that we've done are, are posted up at these websites, right? So there's a, a lot of the slides that I use are at amari.com in the resources section. Um, a lot of the topics that I talk about, I blog about and link to um, at my blog site, seantalbot.com. And then every single one of the videos that I do on Tuesday nights, I post up to YouTube, you know, because even though we're doing this one on Zoom right now, and that is also live streaming to Facebook, there are still some people who aren't on Facebook or don't want to jump on Zoom and they want to look at this later. So, so the YouTube, um, channel is there as well for people to people to you know consume that and share that and you know put it on their own social media so before i delve into the immune system i want to give a little bit of a background to anybody who maybe this is the first time that they're seeing something from amari we are the mental wellness company and it might sound you know it's very um it's very fashionable right now it's very trendy for people to be talking about the immune system right because of COVID-19 pandemics because of the quarantines, because, you know, everyone's going back to school now and everyone's freaking out about, you know, becoming infected. So lots of people are talking about the immune system. Wh wh why does a mental wellness company talk about the immune system? Well, we've been talking about it all along for a very, very important reason, because the immune system is in a very real sense, a sense organ, right? It helps us in our quest towards better mental wellness. So when we talk about these kinds of things, improving focus, improving pressure management, improving confidence, helping with stress resilience, improving mental performance and improving physical performance, those are all under our umbrella of mental wellness. We really feel that every single person out there is somewhere on this mental wellness continuum. You might be at the low end, you might be in the sort of, you know, typical normal zone, you might be pretty optimized, but we can actually meet you wherever you are and move you to the right, help you move from feeling terrible to feeling normal again, from feeling fine to feeling amazing, from feeling amazing to really getting that, that competitive edge in, in, in a lot of different ways. And the, the reason that the immune system comes into that conversation is that the new science around this whole area of mental wellness is telling us that how we feel is not just in our head. It's only partly a brain issue. It is sometimes a brain issue, it is sometimes a gut issue. It is sometimes a heart issue. And it, so all of that, the brain, the gut, the heart, is a, is a coordinated system that we call the gut, brain, heart axis. And the axis part of it is largely your immune system. So we've been harnessing the immune system since day one, three or four years ago when we started this company, for, for, the, for the end benefit of helping people feel better. We know that if we prime your immune system appropriately, we can help you feel about 20% better on this psychological parameter called psychological vigor. Vigor is the opposite state of psychological burnout. So if you can feel 20% better in all aspects of your life, 
physical energy, mental acuity, emotional well-being are all the, the attributes that go into a measurement of vigor. If you can feel 20% better across those parameters, that's going to be a meaningful difference in your life. And all you did for that was to improve your immune system. And the nice side benefit of improving your immune system, priming it so that we feel better, is that it also, a properly primed immune system, protects us better from viruses, from bacteria, from cancer cells, from, from all sorts of different things. So we've done deep dives about those sorts of topics, but just so people realize why we talk about why we talk about the immune system within the context of mental wellness. We've been doing it since the very first day. So the kind of work that I do is sometimes these days called nutritional psychology. Um, I'm trained as a nutritional biochemist. So we're always looking at stress hormones and neurotransmitters and inflammatory markers and all the things that make up the biochemistry of the body. But then we're linking that biochemistry to the psychology, you know, how do those hormones make us feel? How do, do, does, uh, you know, uh, 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 how does the level of inflammation throughout our body and in our brain lead to us feeling happy or sad? You know, those sorts of things. So, you know, we've talked about those sorts of things on, on lots of different deep dives. But the thing that really, I think, is, a, is a, a light bulb for a lot of people is what I said a few minutes ago, that how you feel is not just in your head, you know, we know we have this brain in our head, but we also know that we have a second brain in our gut and a third brain in our heart. And the reason that we call them brains is because they send a lot of information to the brain in, in our head. Part of the gut brain is the microbiome, these trillions and trillions of bacteria that actually create a lot of the neurotransmitters that help us feel happy, serotonin, or motivated, dopamine, or focused, norepinephrine. We're not gonna talk about those kinds of things tonight. If you, if you wanna hear about those things, go look at some of the, um, some of the previous uh, deep dives that we have. But that idea of your, your microbiome and your gut and your heart, your second and third brains, sending those signals to your brain determine in large part how we feel. If we look at just the microbiome piece, we know that if your microbiome is in balance, you're going to feel good. We know that if your microbiome, microbiome is in balance, you're less susceptible to any of the you know, sort of infections that we might talk about later tonight. If you're out of balance, you'll be more susceptible to infections. You'll be more susceptible to uh, drops in your energy levels, drops in your mood, drops in your resilience, right? So it's all very, very much very, very much connected. And I'm going through these first 10 or 12 slides very quickly because I wanna give people a perspective for the fact that we've been, we've been harnessing the immune system for a very, very specific benefit, mental wellness from, from day one. What we've been seeing over time though, having, having used these products and used these programs now for several years and people have, have that real experience in their own bodies. We've got really good science. We've got really good testimonials to show this very, very close linkage between what is happening in the mind and what is happening in the body. So the shirt I've got on tonight, happy mind, happy body, that couldn't be more true today than ever before in our entire human history because we actually have some really good tools that help us do this, that help us link together these three brains. So don't get me wrong, we're not, we're not saying that what's happening in your head, your head brain, is no longer important, right? It's still really, really important. The brain in your head does some certain things really, really well, but it doesn't do everything really well, right? Some of the things around what your gut does better and what your heart does better, if we could take the best of all of those three brains and link them together in a coordinated way, that's how we can improve mental wellness and physical health in some really important ways. And the way that we link those is this axis in between. So when we talk about the axis, it's the, it's the, it's the overlapping redundant communication network whereby those three brains communicate with each other. So it's, it's, you, you can see something very, very important here that all of these arrows are bi-directional. These, these go these go these go 
multiple ways, right? We could make it really messy because some of the signals go directly from the gut to the, to the brain. Some of the signals go directly from the brain to the heart. It, we could have arrows going all over every which way, but we just, you know, get the point across by showing that these, these signals, this information is a, is a, is a two-way conversation. It's not just sending information like a telegraph, right? There really is a lot of back and forth that happens. And when we talk about the signals that are being sent, right? Sometimes it's biochemicals like neurotransmitters. Sometimes it's cell to cell communication. And we're gonna talk about that a lot tonight because of the immune system. Sometimes it's, it's directly hardwired connections through the nervous system. A lot of what's going on is the immune system. So you can see I've got it highlighted here in red because that's really what we're gonna focus on tonight. We've done separate deep dives on just the brain and just the heart and just the gut and just the endocannabinoid system. But th this idea of the axis, you know, when we say gut, brain, heart, axis, that axis piece isn't just a throwaway term. It's a, it's a, it's a very important piece. It's a very important target. And the thing that makes me really, really excited about it is that we have known that all of these targets have existed, right, for a long, long time. But what we didn't know until very recently is how we could modulate them, how we could modify them, how we could optimize them so that we can get these end benefits in people's lives. So I explained one of those. If we can, if we can prime your immune system appropriately, we can help you feel better and be well because your, your body is able to to protect yourself at a much, much higher level. So let me take a sip of water before I jump into this next one. You know, the immune system, that, that just one part of this axis that we're talking about, we think of the immune system now as a, as a, as a separate distributed organ, right? An organ that really reaches every single part of the body. And, th and th 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 that's important from a shielding perspective, right? It's important from the perspective of your immune system being a good shield to protect you from the world out there, right? And that world out there is viruses and bacteria. The world in here is cancer cells. It's, it's, in, it's environmental exposure. There's a, there's a whole bunch of things that your immune system senses and by sensing that, then figures out what, what, what the situation is and then sends a signal. Um, there's a lot of ways we can send signals. The one thing that about, the, about the immune system that is really, really interesting is that it can reach into your brain. It can reach into your gut. It can reach into some of these places that are, that are sometimes we think of as being shielded off, right? People have probably heard of the, 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 the blood brain barrier, right? That things that are in the blood can't get across into the brain unless there's a transporter, unless there's a, a real good reason for that thing to get across. Um, there's a very similar barrier at the level of the gut. And at the level of the gut, you can think of it as being as thin as a piece of saran wrap. It's actually thinner than that, but that at least gives you a, gives you sort of a visual. You know, it's only one cell thick, but if it's, if it's intact, right, if it's, if it's non-permeable, if it has good integrity, things can't get through there unless we want them to get through there. Sometimes if, they're, if we have leaky gut, right, if we have gut permeability, things can get through and, and you know, cause problems. One of the places that it causes problems is in the immune system. So we think of the immune system as a seventh sense because it really can help us communicate across our entire bodies um, through, in, in places where a lot of other signals can't get through. So, so shift, shifting gears a little bit, that's what I just talked about was why have we been focusing so much on the immune system here at Amari? It's for a mental wellness benefit. But here we are in the middle of 2020, and for the last six, seven, eight, nine months, people have been really freaked out about their immune system with, with, with good reason because of the whole COVID-19 pandemic. And so, you know, people are doing things like this. They're going on Google and they're typing in immune nutrients or immune system nutrition or how to eat for immune system strength or something like that. Just to illustrate the point of how confusing this area might be for a lot of people, I went on at about four o'clock this afternoon and I, onto Google, and I typed in immune nutrients. In less than a, about a half a second, I got 110 million results back. And a lot of those results, right, paid, you go through a couple of pages of Google results, 
what almost every single one of those articles is talking about. You know, the article might be, oh, the top 10 nutrients for your immune system, the top five nutrients for your immune system, the top three superfoods for your immune system, you know, all that kind of stuff. What almost every single one talks about is this, vitamin C, vitamin D, and zinc. And those are, those are certainly important. Um, I have had, I bet, hundreds, hundreds of text messages over the last few months, people saying, you know, my doctor or someone I, you know, listen to on a blog or blah, 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 is recommending that I, that I take more vitamin C, vitamin D, zinc, right? And to all of those people who ask me questions about that, I say, well, sure, but that is the bare minimum, right? That is, you know, for somebody to say, you know what you need for you to make your immune system strong? Vitamin C. That's like saying, you know what you need to uh, have a good, healthy life? Oxygen or water. Or, I mean, it's, 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 it's ludicrous to even say that, that, that these are, that you should even think of these as, as interesting, right? They're important. You have to have them. This is one of the reasons that they're in our Vita GBX product, a multivitamin, something you take every day. But think of that as the bare, bare minimum. Let me say it another way. If you're not getting enough of these, that's a problem. If you're, so solve the problem by getting enough of these. If you're getting enough of these, getting more of these isn't going to help you anymore. It's not going to help your immune system one iota. In fact, if you, if you follow some of the recommendations on these 110 million hits that you get on Google, you'll probably get your immune system into a problem because you'll start suppressing your immune system by taking too much zinc or too much vitamin D or et cetera, et cetera. But we'll get into that kind of stuff. What can you do? Well, those are the kinds of things we've been talking about for the last several months. You can actively support your immune system. Take it from, you don't want it to be bad. Take it from that, that place of okay and bring it to a place of optimized. And the way to optimize it is to look at what's happening with your gut health. Look at what's happening with your stress sleep profile. Look at what's happening with, is your immune system properly primed? Um, do you have too much inflammation, not enough inflammation? You wanna get your inflammation just right. So we've talked about all these kinds of things. Tonight, we're talking about the, the right nutrients. Next week, we'll talk about inflammation and cardiorespiratory um, function. So let me just explain to people kind of briefly um, what those nutrients are doing. Like why in the world would somebody be recommending that you get vitamin C in order to keep your immune system strong? Like, I mean, this is the one that's been around since forever, right? When you, when you catch a cold, you, you run out and you get vitamin C or you, you know, get one of those little sachets that has a high dose of vitamin C in it and you, and you drink it down and it's supposed to stimulate your immune system. Well, it doesn't, it, it, it does no such thing. Um, it, what it can do on a short-term basis, if you take 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 milligrams of vitamin C for two or three days after you've become infected with a, with a cold, with an influenza virus, it can, it can briefly stimulate your immune system to fight off that infection if you have an infection. Beyond about three days, it loses its efficacy. It doesn't work anymore, right? So you do that for a couple of days when you, you, get, you get the sniffles and great. It, it helps your immune system kick out that infection a little bit faster, right? So, you know, and the, and the little bit faster means if that cold was going to last for seven days, now it's going to last for four days, right? So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a measurable benefit, but it's not like you want to do that on a regular basis. You do not want to be taking thousands of milligrams of vitamin C on an every single day basis to sort of ward off, you know, whatever you might be encountering today. Because even though vitamin C is important for your immune system, right, it's important for a lot of the very vital functions of different classes of immune system cells. So a couple that I want to point out, um, this one, oxidant generation, this one, um, phagocytosis activity. It will help certain immune system cells on a short-term basis, like I just described, sort of wake up and fight that virus. And there's two really key ways where, you're, where, where, these, where these neutrophils and, and macrophages will fight those, those, uh, those viruses. They can either do an oxidative burst, which is to cause, uh, to, 
to create these reactive oxygen molecules that they will blast out that will kill the virus. The other way is for them to actually do a Pac-Man sort of a thing and engulf it and like gobble it up and then digest it on the, on the inside of the cell. So both of those can be damaging to the immune system cells. So what vitamin C can do is it can facilitate that activity that I just described, oxidative burst and phagocytosis engulfing, but it can also protect that cell from the damage that that virus might cause to the cell. So this is, this is really where vitamin C shines. But the, the best way to use vitamin C is if you know you're infected, you do a thousand or two thousand or three thousand every day for three days and then stop. But what you want to be doing on a daily basis is making sure that you have sufficiency of vitamin C levels. You want to have proper tissue saturation of vitamin C levels. So that means taking a multivitamin that has the right amount of vitamin C in the morning, taking that same thing in the afternoon or, or evening. So you've got a full 24 hour tissue saturation. Vitamin C is a water soluble vitamin. It's going to be washed out of your system very, very quickly. Um, so, you know, these are some of the things that vitamin C can do and why you would be interested from an immune system perspective. Um, this is looking at vitamin D. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sort of circle back around to each of these after I tell you a little bit about, about, about sort of how they work in the body. Um, so vitamin D is a, it's really a hormone. We still call it a vitamin since its discovery way back in the day, but we can make it, we can make it from exposure to sunlight, you know, get out in the, in the sunshine for 10 or 15 or 20 minutes a day. Um, but, but in the winter time, especially the sun for most people is not strong enough to do that vitamin D conversion from its inactive form that's in the skin to its active form that has all, that has, it has thousands and thousands of biochemical effects throughout the body, one of which is immune system function. And so that's why we have to get it in our diet. Unfortunately, the amount that we get in fortified cereal and fortified milk and, you know, things like places where vitamin D is being added to the food supply, those are not high enough levels of vitamin D in order to actually get our blood levels up. And we need to get our blood levels up in order to have these sorts of, 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 of effects. So vitamin D is going to be really, really good for gut integrity. It's going to be really, really good for different kinds of immune system function, whether we're talking about uh, the macrophage that I just talked about before or the neutrophils. These are going to be important for your body's first line um, um, benefits, what, 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 what is called your innate immune system. And it's gonna be very important for your, uh, for your adaptive immune system, something that comes on a couple of days later. There have been good studies to show, just like with vitamin C, if you're deficient, your immune system is gonna be suppressed and you are not able to mount an effective immune system response. So the solution to that is, get yourself from insufficiency or deficiency back up to sufficiency or a normal level, but you don't need to go beyond that. Going beyond that isn't gonna give you any more benefits. It might actually cause some problems. And we'll talk about those in just a second. Um, and then the next one is zinc. And zinc is a really, really easy one to overdose on. So vitamin C, you can take a lot of it before it starts to become a problem. You, you know, it, like I said, it's water soluble, so you pee a lot of it out. Vitamin D, because it's a fat soluble vitamin, you can get into a toxicity situation where it starts to build up in your body because it can actually be stored in different tissues, such as your fat tissue. Um, in most cases, you kind of have to work at it in order to get into a deficiency, or in, into a into a vitamin D overdose, vitamin D toxicity sort of a situation. But zinc is super, super easy to do. The, the, the daily value for zinc is, is only 15 milligrams. And so, you know, 15 milligrams, it's really easy to find supplements out there that are 30 or 45 or 100 of zinc. Those are very quickly going to push you into a toxicity situation. But, you know, the right amount of zinc is actually a good thing. It, it works in, in the innate Im immune system. It works in the adaptive immune system. It has, it has all kinds of, of, of lovely benefits, right? So take, the, take what's shown on the screen right now. This is the problem with being low zinc flip it around and you can see if you're if you go from deficient state to, to sufficient state you're going you're to get that benefit you're going to have the right level of monocytes you're going to have the right activation of macrophages you're going to have the right killing activity of natural killer cells etc cetera, etc cetera. but it's really really easy 
to go overboard. And what that looks like for all of these, whether we're talking about C or D or zinc or any of the other things we're gonna talk about, there's a low level where you have problems, deficiency state or insufficiency state. There's a high level of overdose or excess where you're getting into what are actually clinically look a lot like some of the same problems, right? Your immune system has problems at low levels, your immune system has problems at high levels. There's all kinds of other you know, sort of clinical manifestations. But where we wanna be is here with each and every one of these nutrients that we're gonna talk about because th then your immune system has, has the right amount of material. It doesn't have too much of the material to, to get you into trouble. It's, it's like what I talk about a lot on these, on these webinars. It's the Goldilocks approach, right? You don't want too hot, you don't want too cold, you want just right. You don't want too much, you don't want too little, you want just the right amount, right? So we have to think about that. And it's this, this Goldilocks approach in my field, biochemistry, th th this is a term we use all the time. Sometimes people will talk about an inverted U-shaped curve, right? Where, you know, if you, if, you know, if you think of like, you know, something that looks like the St. Louis arch, right? A, you know, sort of a curve that goes, that goes up and then has a tipping point and goes down. Almost all of biochemistry follows that kind of a, of a curve. It's the Goldilocks approach. Too little is bad. Too much is bad. Just right is where we want to go. And each of these nutrients, each of these approaches that we talk about will have a different sort of tipping point. And that's where it gets confusing, right? That people will look at the low end and they'll go, oh, well, more is better. More is better. More is better up to a point and then more becomes worse and worse and worse and worse. I wrote a whole book about this a couple of years ago called Deadly Antioxidants because at that time, close to 10 years ago now, antioxidants like C um, were, were really, really hot and people were very, very much overdosing with them, overdosing with C and E and beta carotene and resveratrol and things like that. And I wrote the book from a very specific perspective as to get that point across to people, it, you know, explain that inverted U shape and explain this Goldilocks um, um, uh, principle um, in a way that related to a lot of the supplements that people were taking. And so a lot of people in the nutrition industry got really mad at me because it's a, it's a, it's a big category, right? Billions of dollars in in antioxidants are are, are sold every every single year, um, but it you know my point wasn't to like torpedo that category. It was to get people to continue using them. I'm I'm a, I'm a huge advocate of supplements when they're used the right way in the right balance. They can really do some very meaningful positive things but we don't want people going nuts with them and then, and then developing these problems, which are, you know, the exact opposite of what they're, of what they're trying to do. So, all right, let me, let me jump off that, off that uh, uh, soapbox. Uh, before I get into the actual solutions that I want to talk about tonight, I want to say just a, just a quick word about two other aspects of, of this sort of axis. Um, one of which is what you're seeing on the screen right now is a very busy, very jargony kind of a slide related to the endocannabinoid system. So if you remember a couple of slides back, I was explaining that the axis that we talk about is how your three brains communicate with each other, right? Some of those signals go through your nervous system, some go through your cardiovascular system, et cetera, et cetera. Some go through your immune system, which we're gonna talk about for the rest of the night, but some of them also go through your endocannabinoid system. And so, it's not so much that there's a direct relationship to activating your endocannabinoid system and improving your immune system vigilance, right? It doesn't quite work that way. The immune, certain immune system cells do have um, endocannabinoid receptors, so that, that tells us that they're listening to the signal in a certain way. But what we think is, is the real benefit here is that if you can activate your endocannabinoid system, you can reduce your stress. You can reduce your anxiety you can get better sleep, you can, you can bring your inflammation back to a balance point, right? So all of those are related to your body's ability to have good immune system function. If you're overinflamed, leads to bad immune system function. Um, if you're overstressed, bad. If you're, if you're tense and anxious and you can't sleep, bad, et cetera, et cetera. So it's the, the, the endocannabinoid system seems to be um, facilitative 
um, or what's, what's the other word that I would use? Uh, permissive to the things that I'm going to talk about tonight. If your endocannabinoid system is, is properly primed, we use the same wording when we talk about immune system priming and, and endocannabinoid system priming. If it's properly primed, your immune system will work better because these signals involving inflammation and stress hormones and things like that will reach their targets in a more efficient way. So the reason I mention that is that a lot of people have, have asked me about we have a product at Amari called Hemp GBX Plus, which is a hemp oil product, or some people would call it a CBD product, even though I don't like that, that, that terminology. Um, but it, it can help to prime that system to facilitate some of the things that we're gonna talk about later on tonight. In a similar fashion, getting better sleep can also facilitate a lot of the things that we're talking about tonight. So we know that if you, if you don't get good sleep, that leads to a catabolic situation in the body. We know that your muscles break down faster. We know that your fat builds up faster. We know that your immune system cells break down, right? There's an actual, like a, like a, like a, there's a functional impairment of your immune system, but there's also a physical impairment of your immune system if you're, if you're not getting very good sleep. So there's a, there's a definite link going this way. For good sleep leads to good immune system function. Bad sleep leads to bad immune system function. Overnight is where your immune system does a lot of its really good repair and recuperation work. So if you're not getting enough sleep in terms of total quantity of hours, or you're not getting good sleep in terms of quality of those hours, that can have a detrimental effect on your immune system. So again, it's the sleep ends up being permissive to allow the immune system to do the things that we want it to do at the level of efficiency that we want it to do it. So, you know, the things I'm going to talk about, if you're getting better sleep, the things that I'll talk about will get better traction across across the kinds of benefits that we're going to talk about. Um, I won't talk too much about this one, th 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 this side of the slide. I'll just, I'll just make one little note of it. If your immune system is either underactive or overactive, the opposite ends of that priming window that, we, that, that, that I've talked about, that Michael Quacha has talked about, um, if your immune system is, is on either of those ends, that can actually disrupt your sleep, right? So there's very much sort of a, a chicken and egg scenario that goes on here, that if you get poor sleep, you have problems with your immune system, you have problems with your immune system, you get poor sleep, and you get into that vicious cycle. The best place to, to short circuit that cycle is at the level of sleep. If you can get better sleep, everything's better. Right? Your mood is better, your energy is better, your focus is better, your immune system is better, your sleep the next night is better, et cetera, et cetera. Right? So that, that's, that's all I'll say about that. I've done complete deep dives about, about sleep. Um, so the way that we're doing this at Amari is really, really different from, com compared to what anybody has ever done in the, in the history of nutrition products before. And th that's, that's for a lot of reasons. It's because you know, we had a founder that wanted to start a brand new company around exclusively around mental wellness. It's, it's, it's because the science changed right at the same time that we were putting the company together. It's, you know, it, it, there, there's, there's a lot of reasons that we have been in the right place at the right time, to be perfectly honest with you, to address this problem. But think about this. We started this company in 2017. Um, we launched our first products in 2018, beginning of 2018. Um, and so we've been selling them now for you know two and a half years. Um, and right, like I said at the beginning, right from day one, we were very much focused on the immune system as the way to get these three brains to talk to each other and help people feel better. And now we find ourselves in the, in the middle of this pandemic, which is, I mean, in, in some parts of the country, it's as bad as it's ever been. And people are really concerned about their immune system. And you see all these companies, you know, saying, well, there's an opportunity. Let's push out a bunch of immune system products. And that's why you see all these vitamin C, vitamin D, zinc, elderberry, you know, nonsense that's out there because companies are coming and say, what can we do quickly? You know, we need to do something that's immune system, right? But if you're doing it the right way, and we were doing it for mental wellness indication, if you're doing it the right way, you can really get these, get these, these widespread benefits across mental wellness parameters, physical health parameters, et cetera, et cetera. So we're the only ones doing what we're doing, especially in the way that we're doing it. So the products that I really wanna focus on tonight 
our, our Vita GBX and our superfood because we wanna talk about nutrients. What specific nutrients can we bring to bear on this problem, right? So typically when we talk about Vita GBX, we're talking about it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a full spectrum, multivitamin, multimineral, but it also has amino acids, it also has phytonutrients, it also has, um, it has a, wide array of, a wide array of nutrients to help with keeping your body healthy, but also sharpening your mind, right? This great mind proprietary blend, it's in there primarily for mind support, right? And that, that makes perfect sense for a multivitamin at a mental wellness company. But when you look and you see what these nutrients are, right? I just talked about vitamin C. Here's vitamin C in a very, very absorbable form, these calcium ascorbates and magnesium ascorbates. These are um, buffered and highly absorbable forms of, of vitamin C. So buffered is important, so it's not gonna give you heartburn. Um, absorbable is important because, you know, we don't wanna give you just, you know, plain old ascorbic acid and, you know, cross your fingers that that's going to do the job. We want to make sure that you're absorbing it into your systemic circulation. We're giving it to you at 100 milligrams. But, but keep in mind what we're doing here with, um, with Vita GBX. We want to maximize tissue saturation. That means that every tissue in your body has the appropriate level of that particular nutrient for as much of those 24 hours of every single day as possible. And the best way to do that is to take half of the dose in the morning and half of the dose in the evening. Typically, we'll say to people, take, take, um, uh, take your first dose in the, in, the, in the morning with breakfast, and your second dose in the evening with dinner. And the reason we do that is that we know, science has been telling us this for years, these nutrients, even though we're giving you highly absorbed forms of every single nutrient, they're absorbed better within the matrix of a mixed meal. And what that means is a meal, not a Pop-Tart, not a cup of coffee, right? Those aren't meals, those, those are foods. Me a meal would have carbohydrates and fats and fibers and proteins and you know all of that together is the is the milieu that your gut wants to see in order to have proper absorption. So you know so that's one piece of it. The other piece of it is that every single one of these nutrients we think of what is the most bioavailable form, which doesn't just mean absorption, right? When we talk about bioavailability, we want to make sure that it's 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 um it's it's it, it's, it has good dissolution, right? So it breaks up in the stomach and then it gets into the small intestine where it's actually gonna be absorbed and it has good solubility, right? So dissolution, solubility, absorption. That's where a lot of people think bioavailability ends, but it doesn't. If we can get it to be broken down, if we can get it to be solubilized, if we can get it to be absorbed into your systemic circulation, then we have to make sure that that nutrient gets to the target tissue, so there's all kinds of parameters around delivery, that it stays in the target tissue and doesn't just get washed out by your liver. That's a, that's a very key um, uh, uh, problem for certain forms of vitamin E and things like that. Your liver will look at it and go, well, well that, that's no good. That's a synthetic form. Let's get rid of that, right? So we use natural forms. We use highly bioavailable forms. We want to make sure that they get to the tissue. We want to make sure that they stay in the tissue. We want to make sure that we have another dose of it coming in 12 hours later. You know, so there's a lot of thought that goes into something that, you know, I think a lot of people look at Vita GBX and go, oh, that's a vitamin. That's a, that's a multivitamin. I can get that at the store, at the grocery store for $5, right? You can, you can get a multivitamin at the store, at the grocery store for $5. You might as well take that $5 and fold it up and light it on fire and flush it down the toilet, literally. Like in, in, in those kinds of multivitamins, what you'll probably absorb is your vitamin C and some of your B vitamins. The rest of it, forget about it. It's, it's, you eat it, it's either going in the toilet you're, or, you're, or you're peeing it right out, right? It's, it, it's really not the kind of thing that we want. So anyway, I got off on a little tangent there. Vitamin C, 100 milligrams, but because you're dosing it twice a day, it's really 200 milligrams, right? So it's not that mega dose of 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 milligrams that you might use on that short-term basis. We don't have one of those products. And the reason we don't have one of those products is because there's a 
thousand of them at the store and they're all five bucks, right? That might be a good spend of your five bucks if you're gonna use it for three days after Aunt Sarah sneezes on you, right? And you have to get, you have to get over that, 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 that influenza that she just gave you. So uh, here's vitamin D3. So the most bioavailable form, the most potent form of, of vitamin D that's out there we give it to you at 500 international units. So 125% of the daily value taken once, taken twice is 250. Now that level, a thousand IUs a day, that is about the perfect level to give to somebody day in, day out, every single day of the year. You know, here in the summertime, that's the amount that I take every single day. Once we get to about, so I live in, I live in Salt Lake City. Um, once we get to about, the middle of October, certainly the beginning of November, I'm going to start taking a separate vitamin D supplement. I want to take this thousand that I'm getting every day in Vita GBX and bump that up by another 4,000, 5,000, right? I only do that during the winter months when the sunlight's not strong enough exposure for me to convert the, the, the inactive form of vitamin D into, into active forms, right? So, but from a, on a daily basis to keep your immune system strong, this is the, this is a thousand I use a day. That is the sweet spot that the science tells us. Um, zinc, remember I said that before zinc was really, really hard, really, really easy to overdose on. That's one of the reasons that we only give seven and a half milligrams per serving, right? That times two is gonna be up to 100%. That's gonna be your 15 milligrams. When you go and look at some of the zinc supplements out there, I just cringe when I hear people say that they're taking zinc. Those sorts of minerals should only be taken, and I say those sorts of minerals, almost all of these minerals, except for perhaps calcium and magnesium, really should be part of a multivitamin because when you start taking them separately, they're really, really easy to overdose on, right? So we, we only want about 15 milligrams. We want that to be balanced with the right amount of copper. And so here we have, we have, a, we have a milligram of copper per day. That could maybe go up to two milligrams, but copper is one that's really easy to overdose on too. So anyway, I wanted to show you, I wanted to show you the supplement facts panel so that you can see that we've got those levels in, 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 in forms and in levels, dosage amounts that we've really, really thought through. You know, it's, it's not like one of my pet peeves is the, is the style of product formulating where companies just want to say, well, let's get these, these DV numbers. Let, let's get these percentages as high as possible right? Because more is better. And, you know, you end up seeing, you know, these vitamin D, uh, uh, vitamin B complex levels at thousands and thousands of percents, right? And people go, well, maybe it's not a problem because they're water soluble and you just pee them out. But, you know, why over supplement? Why put that, that strain on your, on your kidneys and your liver and, you know, all the other systems of your body if you don't need that? Why not just think it through scientifically and give the amount that the science tells you is the right amount. Why not give it in a form where it's gonna be absorbed better so that you can give, uh, give a good amount and get a good biological effect without having to you know, hit somebody over, over the head with a sledgehammer, okay? So off the soapbox. The other piece of this, the other side of the supplement facts panel is this Bright Mind proprietary blend. And I'm typically talking about, you know, how these nutrients are good for your mental focus and they're good for blood flow in the brain and they're good for repairing neurons and things like that. And, and they are, right? That's the main reason that we have them in there. But we also have a lot of, a lot of nutrients in here that have very wonderful benefits on the immune system. So I'm gonna actually leave those for, 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 a, for a future slide in just a couple of slides, because I, this is hard for a lot of people to read, but the flavonoids, the carotenoids, the tocotrienols, the, the, the tocopherols, all of those have benefits for your immune system in some very important ways. So when we look at this, one of our bullet points since day one for the benefits of taking Vita GBX has been that it supports a healthy immune function. And it supports a healthy immune function because it helps with 
oxidation and inflammation and cellular protection and those sorts of things that the immune system really, really needs to do when it goes into battle against these viruses. But one of the ways that Vita GBX is significantly, significantly different compared to any other multivitamin style product on the market is not because of the amounts that we give and not because of the forms that we give. It's, it's this. And not because it's, it's, it's for body and mind. It's because of this. It's because of the activation of these CDRs, these cellular defense responses. Now I've done a whole deep dive just about this concept. But so, 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 I'll, so I'll give you the really, really short Reader's Digest version on it. We can give vitamins and minerals and antioxidants and phytonutrients to, to be the shield, right? To set up a protective barrier, a protective defense between us and that thing that would cause us harm, right? So that's the shielding effect that we want from, from antioxidants, from, from a lot of these nutrients. And that's great. But if you can also formulate that you're using the right nutrients to not only put up a shield, but also to train your body at the cellular level, at the individual cellular level to protect itself. That is like, th this is going to sound like hyperbole. This is going to sound like an overstatement. Training your cells to protect themselves is literally millions of times more effective than setting up a shield, right? Setting up a shield is still important, right? We want to, we want to do that. Hallelujah, let's do that every single day on a daily basis, twice a day if we can, you know, we're going to get some benefits from that. But when I say it's a million times more effective, if we're activating these kinds of pathways, like the, like the NERF2 pathway, for example, now we're encouraging our cells to make their own protective proteins, these, these antioxidant enzymes like glutathione and catalase and, 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 and a whole variety of, 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 of other enzymes, right? That not only protect against one invader, but protect against that one and kill it and then kill the next one and 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 kill the next one. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very different biological process whereby your cell is much more efficient doing it than, than anything external that we can sort of set up artificially between the between the stressor and the and the thing that's being stressed our cells so if you want to get into the into the nitty-gritty of that um this particular talk when i've talked about cellular defense responses really gets into the nitty-gritty right and I, I you know i love that kind of stuff but suffice to say that if you take the right nutrients you naturally activate all of these systems and so your cell is more resilient, right? And you do that times the 10 trillion cells that we have in our human body and, and, and you get some real health benefits at the end of the day, okay? So what that looks like, right? Just to kind of sum it up on one kind of very wordy, busy, busy um, slide here is that one of the things we've discovered over the last 20 or so years of, of nutrient research is that a lot of these foods that we, that we view as being good for us right, whether it's a particular fruit or a vegetable or a spice or an herb, the reason it's good for us is because there's some sort of a constituent in that fruit or plant. And more typically, it's not just one constituent, it's a family of constituents that, that triggers these CDRs. And that triggers the, the, this, 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 this um, proactive protection that the cell, where the cells can protect themselves, protect themselves from oxidative damage with flavonoids, protect themselves from inflammatory damage or anti-aging damage with, with spices and some of these metabolic cofactors. Protect our brain. You know, one of the reasons we can get these mental focus and clarity benefits is because we're enhancing the metabolism of that brain, but we're also protecting those delicate neurons from damage in the future, right? So you keep it from getting damaged, it's gonna work better. And then you can enhance that workload by giving the right nutrients, right? So some of the things that you see here are these flavonoids from our GBX blend. These are apple phenols, grapeseed catechins, uh, pine bark OPCs, oligomeric paranthocyanidins. These are all things that can have, their, they have antioxidant benefits, but they also have anti-inflammatory benefits, they have anti-aging benefits, they have blood flow enhancing benefits. The, you know, it's hard to put them in just one little box, but 
I've done that. I have to put them in some box. So I put them in the antioxidant box. Um, these kinds of things, ginger and turmeric and those sorts of um, very healthy spices. You know, a lot of times when I, when I do media you know, reports about like anti-aging diets. I've got spices all out on the counter. I've got oregano and clove and sage and all these wonderful things that they're just sitting in our spice cabinet. And they are medicines when you use them frequently and liberally in our diets. We've got these metabolic cofactors. When you look on the back of that Vita GBX label and you see alpha lipoic acid and you see N-acetylcysteine and you see acetyl L-carnitine and you see you see different forms of choline. These are all metabolic cofactors to help slow that aging process, which is gonna be good for every single tissue in the body. One of the reasons that is really important, which I've talked about in other, other lectures, is that as our bodies are aging, our neurons are aging, our skin is aging, and that's where we see it. Our muscles are aging, our bones are aging. Our immune system is aging too. Our microbiome is aging. When our immune system ages, we actually have a term for it because it's so well studied. It's called immunosenescence. If we can take nutrients like this and get a systemic anti-aging benefit, that's gonna be good for our skin, it's gonna be good for our brain, it's gonna be good for our muscles. It's also gonna be good for our immune system, right? So we really have to think about this, this idea of supporting our immune system in a much, much broader way than, than the way that we, can, that we typically think of it, which is, oh, I'm sick, now I should think about my immune system, or someone sneezed on me, or we're in a pandemic, you know? It's like the immune system does a lot more than most people have any concept of, and if we can harness that and use that to improve our mental and, and physical performance, why wouldn't we do that? And then mental focus benefits. We're, here, one of the things I'm really proud of with Vita GBX formulation is that we didn't just give vitamin E. We didn't just give beta carotene, right? We really went to great lengths to make sure, I think I just froze. So I'm gonna wait until I come back. Okay, I think I'm back. I wanna, I wanna, I'm gonna restate this because it's a really important point. I feel really proud about this formulation of Vita GBX because we went to great lengths to make sure we didn't just give isolated nutrients like vitamin E or beta carotene. We really went to the full spectrum approach. So if you look at the tocopherols, let me get my cursor here, tocopherols, we wanted to make sure we did a full spectrum tocopherol. In most multivitamins, the only tocopherol you're gonna see on the label is vitamin E. But what people don't realize is that vitamin E is actually a family of not just alpha tocopherol, which is the one that most multivitamins have, but also beta and gamma and delta tocopherol, right? So there's four kinds of, of, of vitamin, vitamin E. There's also a, a, a family of nutrients called tocotrienols, which are like vitamin E. They're a little bit shorter side chains. They, they do some different things in cell membranes that tocopherols don't do, but there's four of those, alpha, beta, gamma, delta. Um, when we look at carotenoids, typically the only carotenoid that you're gonna see in a multivitamin, if it has any carotenoids at all, and most don't, is beta carotene. Right? We've all heard of beta-carotene before. Beta-carotene is another one of the antioxidants that is super, super easy to overdose on. And, and it will, it, if, you, if you don't have enough of it, you're over-oxidized. If you have too much of it, you're over-oxidized. Right? That's an example of that Goldilocks approach again, that inverted U-shaped curve. We, we give a full spectrum of carotenoids from a variety of different sources. So not just beta-carotenes, but also alpha-carotenes, also lutein and astaxanthin and zeaxanthin and lycopene. And, you know, so the reason that's important is that all of these different phytonutrients that I'm blabbing about, they're all good, right? They're all beneficial. They all have health benefits, but they typically have health benefits in different parts of the body in different tissues, in different cells, often in different parts of the cell. So some of them might work at the cell membrane, some of them work, might work outside of the cell membrane, some of them might work inside the cell, in the cytoplasm, some might work at the level of the mitochondria, some might work at the level of the DNA in the nucleus. So like that sort of, again, broad spectrum of, of, you know, when we think about mental wellness at Amari and we say that we have, we have products that can help you feel better, 
feel better could be 50 different things to 50 different people. For one person, it could be less stress. For another person, it could be better sleep. For another person, it could be better energy or less brain fog, et cetera, et cetera. The same exact principles apply when you start thinking about nutritional biochemistry and how we link that to nutritional psychology. You really have to look at it with this, first of all, with this very, very broad overarching construct, but then you have to, like, you have to come out with a product, so you have to take it from that very abstract thinking down and down and down and down, right down to the cellular level, like we're doing with all of our products. So Vita GBX is one way to do that. GBX Superfood is another way to do that. So Superfood doesn't have appreciable levels of any vitamins and minerals, right? That's not the kind of product that it is. Vita GBX is vitamins and minerals plus phytonutrients. Superfood is phytonutrients with an exclamation point, right? This is a product where we really looked to the plants and said, what else are in those plants? What is in the kale? What is in the spirulina? What is in the, you know, all the, you'll, you'll, you'll see pictures of them in just a little bit so that we can bring this phytonutrient piece to protect cells, including the immune system, at, at, a, at a higher level that the, you know, that the vitamins and minerals aren't doing. So, you know, this is why we can say things like this, protect cells from damage by oxidative free radicals and inflammatory cytokines, right? We're activating those CDRs in ways that VitaGBX isn't, right? Because, you know, you can't put all the, the planet's phytonutrients into a single product. And one of the, like, one of the downsides of Vita GBX is that even though it's four capsules a day, and those capsules are pretty good size, those are the largest capsules that we have across our entire product line, there's still a lot of stuff that will give us wonderful health benefits that I just can't fit into those capsules. And so that's why we ended up putting it into a, into a drink mix like this, you know, where you can, you, you can, you can mix it up. Um, uh, one of the, one of the anti-stress benefits that we're getting is this, this, this production of heat shock proteins, right? That's one of those CDR pathways that can help protect these cells. So, um, and then we put those phytonutrients. So these phytonutrients all have, you know, beneficial CDR activating um, effects that, you know, they have anti-stress. So we call it an anti-stress phytobiotic proprietary blend. But look at this. One thing you'll notice is that it's a broad spectrum. We didn't just say, you know what, we're going to give you all beets, right? Beets are great, but they're only great for certain things, right? So let's expand that and expand that and expand that. We stopped here, and I want to say one word about this, right? So you can count these up. One, two, three, four, five, ten, right? Would 12 have been better? Would 50 have been better? There's a product that's advertised all the time on one of the podcasts that I listen to that has 70, right? Once you get up to, and that sounds great, right? 70, more is better. But once you get up to those really high levels, what you end up having to do is put in just a pixie dust of each one, right? So if we had 70, which we could have done, we might have to put in, you know, a, a, microgram amounts, right? Teeny tiny amounts, not enough to do anything except to appear on our label, right? So that's another philosophy in the nutrition industry. Give more of something so you have a high number or give more some things, give more things so you have a long, so you have a long label. We, we really go to great lengths to say, well, we've pared it down to these ones and we've given you appreciable, meaningful, effective levels of each one so that you get a benefit. But one of the reasons that we chose what we chose is because of what I said earlier, different phytonutrients, or let me say it this way, different plants have different phytonutrient profiles. Different phytonutrients will deliver different benefits in different parts of the body, in different parts of the cell, et cetera, et cetera. So we're really trying to you know, take that wide funnel and put all the potentials in at the top, but the only things that come out at the bottom are the things that are gonna deliver the, the, the maximum benefit for, for people to actually feel and realize. And that's, a, that's an important thing for us from a product perspective, but it's also an important thing for us from a business perspective, because if we are going out there on, you know, on, the, on the pinnacle and saying, we are the mental wellness company, you will feel better if you take our products and somebody takes a product like this and they don't feel better because we decided to put in a hundred different things at minuscule levels, none of which are at efficacious levels. 
they might take the product and go, eh, well, it, it had a lot of things that got me to buy it, but I didn't feel anything. So I'm not going to buy it again. Right. And that protects our business, right? That allows us to build a business that is meaningful for people in terms of the benefits that they're getting, but also meaningful for people in terms of the businesses that they're building. If you're, if you're, if we're talking about wellness partners. Okay. So those are the things that we have in there. We also back it up with a, with a fiber from a variety of different sources for the same reason. Why wouldn't we put in just one big slug of psyllium, right? Fiber. It's cheap. It's readily available. It has some benefits. Well, that's only one fiber. If we use these other fibers that have other phytonutrients that deliver other benefits in other parts of the body, we get a more systemic uh, overall effect for people. This is one place that we really try to focus on. You know, a lot of our products will have um, featured, branded, very well substantiated scientifically sort of superstar ingredients, right? And this is one of them, right? So in the in superfood there's a lot to talk about there's a lot to talk about it's in a base of of prebiotic fibers and that's going to be good for the microbiome and the other fibers are going to be good for gut integrity and these other fibers are going to be good for cdrs and etc cetera, etc cetera. what people end up feeling primarily is this effect this this enzyme treated japanese asparagus right it's it's asparagus right particular species of asparagus that grows in japan once it's extracted, it has a bioactive compound that does this, that stimulates the production of these heat shock proteins. This is what people are going to feel. If you have more heat shock proteins, you actually sense an anti-stress response in your body, right? So the thing that is getting people to buy a second canister and a third canister and a fourth canister of superfood isn't that they're saying, ooh, my Nrf2 is being activated in my liver cells or, ooh, my, my, uh, my, my, my anti-inflammatory pathways are being activated in, you know, you can't feel that, right? Over time, you're going to reap the benefit of that because your body is going to be healthier, your immune system is going to be stronger, your blood flow is going to be enhanced, et cetera, et cetera. But what people feel is this sort of an effect and they go, whoo, I like, I like the way I feel on that. I'm less, I'm less stressed out. My, I have a longer fuse before I, before I blow up, you know, that sort of thing. So, you know, again, to the point of where the mental wellness company, people have to be able to feel these products. So um, I wanted to get really kind of to the point tonight. We just flipped to the top of the hour. So the last thing I'm going to say before I take a couple of questions is this. Uh, I think based on what I said, if, if, if you're not taking a good multivitamin right now, you ought to be, right? It's, it's one of the very few things that I recommend across the board to everybody. Before I even know anything about you, I, I want you to take a good formulated multivitamin and a good formulated omega-3 product, fish oil product, every single day, right? Those are the, that's like, to my earlier sort of flippant point about bare minimum, that's the bare minimum. And if you're going to choose the bare minimum, you might as well choose a good one. And we've got a really good multivitamin for adults. We've got a really good multivitamin for kids. If you buy those now, you can, this is the last day of this promotion. Sales and marketing has been running this promotion for most of this month. Uh, buy any two, get one free, but it ends tomorrow, right? So go, as soon as we jump off of this, go throw a, a Vita GBX. And you know, if you, if you love your kids, throw a kid's Vita GBX in there too. <laughs> Um, because this is something that has the kids by the GBX has the same nutrient profile as the, as the adult product. The only difference is that we have taken the, the, we've taken the nutrient dosages down to a kid's dosage level, right? But same bioavailability, same broad spectrum benefits across the body, including your immune system. And even though I didn't talk too much about sleep tonight, this would be a great one to add in. This is part of the promotion because getting good sleep is that is hands down, perhaps the best way to keep your immune system strong as we're all going through this stuff, okay? So I'm gonna stop that share. You should just see me now and no slides. And I'm going to do what I do every Tuesday night. I'm going to run up here into the, into the chat room and see, and see what we've got. Um, 
let's see. So this one came in privately. So I'm going to, oh, okay. How do you watch this video later tonight? So, so I'll just say this for everybody. Um, so th this video is, is right now here on Zoom, but we're going to end in a couple of minutes. Um, it's on Facebook, you know, uh, streaming, right? So Facebook will automatically archive it. So you can go to the Amari Global page on Facebook and just start from the beginning. So you can see the whole thing. But then tomorrow morning, once this sort of, whatever happens on the back end of these, once it processes, I'll be able to upload this to YouTube and it will be forever on my YouTube channel. So you can go to YouTube and type in Dr. Sean Talbot, you'll get my YouTube and this will be the first one, the most recent one uh, sometime tomorrow morning, okay? And then from there, you can just copy the link and you can share it. You can share the link from Facebook. We really want as many people as possible to get this information. Okay, so uh, David, oh, David and Rebecca, hey guys, um, are asking this question. Serving size says two capsules. Does that mean one capsule in the morning and two at night or two in the morning and two in the night? Two and two. Yeah, so the, so the daily dosage of Vita GBX is four. And so people ask me this all the time. Let me see the last part of your, your um, if we take multiple products with Bright Minds Blend, is that okay uh, to have that blend multiple times? Yeah, so it's not Bright Minds Blend. Bright Minds Blend is only in Vita GBX and Kids Vita GBX. Um, the blend I think you're talking about is that GBX blend. GBX means gut brain axis. And that's a, that's a combination of three polyphenols. It's, it's, um, it's Asian apple polyphenols. It's French grapeseed polyphenols, and it's New Zealand pine bark polyphenols, right? So they're all polyphenols, but they're different classes of polyphenols. Again, from that perspective of they work in different ways in different parts of the body to deliver different kinds of benefits. So that GBX blend of those three things, apple, grapeseed, pine bark, we have it in Vita GBX. We have it in our energy product. We have it in Mentabiotics. We have it in Mentafocus um, at a level that we intended for people to stack, right? So polyphenols are something that are virtually impossible to overdose on. They're one of the key, um, they're one of the key phytonutrients in a Mediterranean diet that's been associated with heart health benefits and brain benefits. So anti-heart disease, anti-Alzheimer's, anti-diabetes, um, anti-cancer, anti-depression, the list goes on and on and on, right? So the, uh, almost, and th th this is a little bit of an overstatement, almost the, the more polyphenols you can get, the better, right? You, you, you could, if you really, really went out of your way with, with high dose supplementation, you could get yourself into a problem. Like, and resveratrol is a really good example. The amount of resveratrol from grapes and red wine and grape juice and things like that that we're supposed to get is a minuscule, minuscule amount, but every single day on a daily basis. Once people found that resveratrol could have some anti-aging benefits because it activates some of those CDRs that I talked about, specifically one called CERT1, people started mega dosing with it, thinking it was gonna be the fountain of youth and turn back time. And what it actually did, those really, really high doses, thousands and thousands of milligrams, it aged them faster. It had a pro-aging effect, right? Exactly what we don't want. So, um, so, so getting back to the actual question, um, yes, you, can, you should take two Vita GBX in the morning, two Vita GBX in the evening. People have asked me, if I'm gonna forget my evening dose, is it just okay if I take all four in the morning? Yes, that's okay. But you have to understand, you're not gonna get quite the level of tissue saturation for the second half of the day, right? Which is really what we're trying to do by, by, by splitting those doses. Like we know that that evening dose isn't as convenient, but it's really good for you if you can do it, okay? And then the, and then the GBX blend is, 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 is supposed to be in several of those products, right? It, it's in a gut product because it has gut benefits. It's in a brain product because it has brain benefits. It's in an immune system product, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and there's just a couple more questions and then we'll wrap it up. Um, uh, so David and Rebecca are also asking, and this is a great question. I'm glad somebody asked this. Um, can you talk about why a separate B complex, especially with MTHFR, if people have heard of that before, is often suggested by functional medicine people as an additional supplement to a multivitamin? Yeah, because mo so people with, with, with that condition, MTHFR SNPs, um, won't be able to... Um, they, 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 they have problems with what are called methylation reactions. 
B vitamins are needed to make those methylation reactions go. And so if you're taking the wrong kinds of B vitamins, you won't be able to make those methylation reactions go. So I'm of two minds on this, right? I, all the B vitamins that we have that, that, that need to be methylated are methylated in our VitaGBX, right? So people with MTHFR issues can take VitaGBX, know that they're methylated forms, know that their body's gonna be able to use them, even if, the, even if they have these genetic deficits. So that's one piece of it. Do you need more? No. If you have a good microbiome, right? So the no has a big asterisk there. If you have a good microbiome, why? What, what, is the, what has the microbiome got to do with my level of B vitamins? If you have a good microbiome, it's going to make every single B vitamin that you need so you don't need to supplement at all, right? So I get it that a lot of functional medicine docs will say, because you have this issue, MTHFR, you know, at whatever degree that you have it, you need more B vitamins, may be true, and you need them in the right form, absolutely true. So you can take vitamin GBX and be good. But if you're also part of this Amara universe, hopefully you're doing something for your microbiome to get it from a, an unbalanced dysbiotic state back to, a, back to a balanced state. So now you're making those, all those methylated forms of B vitamins, all those methylation cofactors, your body absorbs from your microbiome and you, you use them like crazy. So there's no need for that, for that additional higher dose uh, level of supplementation. Okay, so hopefully, hopefully that answered for you. It's a, it's a, it's a new way of thinking, but that is clearly what the science says, right? The people who recommend those higher dose methylated B vitamins, that's from an era before we knew much of anything about the microbiome. And what we know about the microbiome these days is fundamentally changing everything. It's changing those sorts of B vitamin recommendations. It's changing what we think about mental wellness. It's changing how, how cancer therapy is, is, is. Uh, is, is instituted, it's, it, it is changing absolutely every aspect of human health, which is really, really exciting because a lot of our products are focused on, on, a, on exactly that sort of microbiome gut brain access. Um, and then what kind of vitamin D do you recommend? So, um, oh, if you're gonna take extra. Um, so I would recommend the exact same kind that we have in VitaGBX, just at a higher level. So look for a vitamin D3. It's the, in parentheses, it's going to say colcalciferol. Um, don't look for a D2. That's an ergocalciferol. Um, it's, it's, it's okay. Um, it, 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 it's, it's not absorbed quite as well. It's not converted uh, into active forms quite as well. So the D3 form is what you want, but you can, you can get vitamin D from lots of places. I, I, I actually can't think of the actual company that I buy mine from, but it's, it, it's in a base of coconut oil in a soft gel. The, the oil helps with the absorption, but I, I take it along with my food anyway. So, you know, that's the one to do. So with that, we're just, you know, 10, 10, or 10 minutes over. So I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to see if there's maybe one or two questions that people want to unmute themselves and ask, and then, and then we'll wrap it up for tonight. So you can either unmute yourself directly uh, or you can raise your hand and I can unmute you in the, in the chat. So I see, I actually, I see Susan raising her hand. So Susan, yes. why, don't, why don't you go ahead? Okay. Are there any with just our Amari supplements that we, that are better to take alone or does it matter if we take everything together or, or is it better to separate some? Yeah, um, that's a good question. It's it, the, the, the only ones that have that sort of hard and fast recommendation is VitaGBX, right? Two in the morning with breakfast, two in the evening with dinner, right? The other ones are, are really up to individual preference, right? So I, I do split my supplements, right? I, I, take, I take almost every one of the Amari products um, and I take a certain collection of them in the morning. I take a certain collection of them in the evening. I, and then sometimes I'll, you know, like, like, t you know, today I had a smoothie with the protein and the greens and the fiber and a bunch of other stuff that I threw in there, uh, in the, in the afternoon. Right. So I do split them up because think about it. We've got 22 products. If you're trying to take all of those at once in the morning, that's overwhelming. Right. So I think people should feel comfortable splitting them up throughout the day in whatever, whatever, regimen is going to work for their for their lifestyle. 
Okay. And I would, one other thing. So with the, both the mental heart and the fish oil or the omega, do you think, does it matter? Do you think if we take it at night or in the morning or does it matter at all? Yeah. So, so uh, omega is one that I do take at night. Um, you know, so, so I take omega at night. I take probiotics at night. I obviously take my sleep at night. I take a digestive at night. Um, there's something else in there. Well, anyway, you get the, you get the, okay. the reason I do that is that, you know, the, uh, uh, here's a recommendation that I, I make to a lot of people. I'll say, if you're having a lot of inflammation, take relief in the day and take omega at night. And they, the, the, the reason for that is that they work on inflammation. They both work on inflammation, but they work on inflammation in completely different ways, completely different set of pathways that you could take them together, but I say separate them so your body can get a handle on the inflammation, get it down to an appropriate level so your healing process can, can accelerate. You know, so, I mean, that's an example of, you know, something that I take at night and there's a reason for it. My probiotic, there's no reason for it other than it's two capsules that I don't have to try to cram down my throat in the morning when I'm taking all my other stuff, you know? Right. Mental heart, I do think, I do think you would want to take in the day because there's a noticeable, for a lot of people, there's a noticeable energy enhancement. There's a there no, noticeable physical performance that I think you would want to have throughout the day and you wouldn't want, you wouldn't want to waste that at night. All right. Okay. Thank right. you. Sure thing. Yeah, Jeff. Hey, Dr. Sean. How are you? Good, man. I love your background there. Thank you. So do I. Um, so in, in the history of Amari, have you ever come across her of any of the products that cause heartburn with any, any of the ingredients of, and I'll say specifically with the mental fitness pack? Mm, in the mental fitness pack, um, ashwagandha, you know, that's in mood, uh, mm. mood plus. Um, ashwagandha can cause, cause heartburn in some people. Um, I'm trying okay. to think what else might be, um, nothing else in there should really, should really be doing it unless, unless they're, unless they're very sensitive to caffeine. Um, so there's only 55 milligrams of caffeine in energy plus right. natural caffeine. It's, you know, it's, 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 it's bound up. So it's less likely to do that. But if someone's really sensitive to caffeine, that's, a, that's a known acid, you know, uh, enhancer, so to speak. So it, you know, it could be that, um, I'll say this. I used to have, I used to have ridiculous heartburn pre Amari and mm -hmm. it's, it's gone. Like, I mean, it is gone. My, my, my gastro guy, I turned, I just turned 53. So three years ago, right, right around the time Amari was starting, I had to go in for my, my, my colonoscopy. Right. So they, they checked, they checked both ends and they said, I was like, I was so inflamed they wanted to put me on all these heartburn drugs. And I was like, absolutely not. So I got really focused on taking right. my antibiotics and digestive and all that kind of stuff. Not, a, not even a hint of it anymore. It's, it's, it, it's, it's, it's wonderful. But if anybody has that anymore, Jeff, tell them to take the products with food. That can, that can really, really help. Oh, with, well, okay. I think she's taking it with food, but I'll, I'll double check. Okay. okay. What I did is she's taking all of them at once. So I said, Take the energy for two days and then take the mood for two days and then relief and sleep for three days and see which one. Right. See which one sets her off. Yeah. That's a, that's yeah. a, that's a good approach. I like that. Yeah. Okay. So super. Thanks. All right. And then let's see, let's, 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 let's maybe do one more. Anna. Hi. Um, I just wanted to interject with Jeff on, on that thing. Um, Cause when you said that she's taking all of them at the same time, I was having issues taking, because they're so absorbable, but as soon as, if you're not drinking enough water, even when you're drinking them, you're taking, maybe you're taking them too fast, too close together, it actually, I have a hiatal hernia, so it actually causes an issue, especially if I'm sitting down doing it. I, I noticed that if I take them to get too close together all at once, that I have a certain reaction like that. And then also definitely if I was taking GBX with the mood together, if I separate them by 10 minutes, I'm completely fine. But it was just something I'd experiment with my body so that, you know, the suggestion of the, the whatever, whatever, however her body's reacting was a great suggestion. But I, I Awesome, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. Excellent. All right, you guys, appreciate y'all joining me tonight and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Thank you, Dr. Sean. Thank